Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I'm gonna be basically giving a full like explanation and tutorial on the use effect hook, which is a topic that I believe that there isn't like a lot of content around it and it's very confusing, especially for beginners. And by the way, I have an exam in like 20 minutes, so I'm gonna try to explain uh, to the best of my abilities and this small amount of time that I have. So basically, uh, the use effect hook, uh, for those who don't know, it's a it's a life cycle hook, which basically uh, is called every time your page renders. So when we when we enter into our URL over here, and I'm gonna just render a random application here. So uh, I'm just gonna say Pedro, you can see that my react is running. When this is rendered, the use effect hook will be called. And in order to create a use effect hook, you basically just uh, import use effect from react as you can see right here, it's already built in. And you can come here to your function, you can just write use effect and inside of it you have to pass a function so inside of the parameter the, the parentheses you got to pass a function so just like this and inside of here is basically you can put whatever you want to happen like whatever piece of logic and code you want to happen when the page is rendered right however it is important to understand that this the use effect will be called after the page has been rendered and by default whenever there is a change in the state of the application. So if you have a state here, like I'm gonna create a state called counter. Imagine you just have a random state called counter and it's equal to a, a number, right? It's a number zero. It's a state. Whenever counter changes, the use effect hook will be called again. So whenever there's a change in the state, uh, it will basically call this again. However, this is important because you guys need to distinguish the following. So for example, if I put Pedro, I want to whenever I like in the, the use effect, the only thing I want to do in it is basically just console log the word Pedro. Well, if we come here to our application and we open up the console log, um, wait, let me change this. Um, okay, if you come here to the console log, you'll see that it, it Pedro appears. However, it only appears once. And this is something that is important. It only appears once. And then whenever we refresh the page, it will appear again. However, you can see that we're not changing any states, right? We're not actually changing anything. So for example, if, if instead of uh, console log in Pedro, I console log uh, counter, you'll see that a zero appears. However, we are not changing the counter. So let's make a simple application, which when we click on a button, the counter value will become whatever it is right now, plus one. So we're increasing the counter by one, this variable right here. So to make this application is very simple. We can just render the counter in the screen, you'll see counter will appear here. And let's create a button. So button, which will say something like increase. Okay, so you can see the button increase appears. And by the way, you saw that like whenever I refresh my page here, I tell the page to re render. So I basically tell my like whenever I make any changes, like I'll console log, uh, whatever I'm console logging a random piece of text, you can see it had already rendered like console log to zero. So if I refresh this, if I save this, it will console log zero again. And like on the same console log, the reason for that is because the use effect doesn't isn't called whenever you refresh the page. Uh, on, like it, it isn't only called whenever you refresh the page, it is called whenever the page has re rendered, which happens every time we save a react project. So this, this is just something that I thought would be nice. So you can see that we have some errors currently. And the reason for those errors is because I accidentally deleted this over here. And what we want to do with this is basically whenever we click on the button, we want to increase counter by plus, like by one, right? So to do this, we just give this an on click. And this is just to like, like try to make you guys understand how the use effect works. So in this on click, I'll say set counter equal to counter plus one. Why? Because we want to every time we click on the button, we want to set the value for counter to be counter plus one. So let's do this. If I click on this, becomes one and you can see that this console the use effect was called so this was called whenever st the state changes and that's perfect right because why, why is this happening well because we're changing the state of the application and that's how it's triggered however if we only wanted to render the first value so if we don't want we just want to, to call the use effect whenever we render for the first time how do we do that well right over here we can pass some values into into an array and this might sound a bit confusing and I remember I was really confused when I first learned it but basically what this means is if we put here if we put an array over here we can put whatever states we want to call the use effect when it changes so if I wanted 
to keep like console log encounter every time I clicked on counter. Then I could just put counter inside of this array and you can see it continues doing the same thing it was doing before. However, if for example, I just wanna call this use effect once, I can do this and let me refresh the page. The array is empty and you can see that it doesn't matter. Oh, I forgot to, <laughs> I forgot to save this. So uh, I'm gonna save my application. You can see right here, I'm gonna refresh my page. You can see that it printed zero, but if I keep clicking on it, it won't, like the, the, the value for the state increases, but it won't call the use effect again because we didn't tell it to change and call again if the value for counter is changed, which is something that is really interesting. And the reason why we have to do this is extremely important, especially if you're working with APIs. And a lot of people don't get this in the beginning. So this is why I got here an API for us. I just saw this in a video, so I just thought it was really easy. This link right here, literally, it just gives like fake data for a person. So it's nice because we just we just want a simple API that we're gonna use. And I'm gonna show you guys how, how to like, why this is extremely, like knowing the use effect and why this exists uh, is, is extremely imp important for when you're working with APIs. So for example, imagine we are using Axios. So, or you can use Fetch as well. I'm just imagining I'm using Axios. I already installed Dexus into my application. If you haven't, then go to your terminal and write something like yarn add Axios or npm install Axios, but I already did it. So I'm gonna come here and say import Axios from Axios. And now that we have imported this, let's make an API call to this link that I have over here. And I'm gonna show you guys something. So Axios.get, it's an API call to this link. Oh, not this one, this one right here. So let's copy this and let's put it over here just a simple API call. And the only thing I want is that after we receive the data, I want to console.log the data, right? So let's grab here response, which is the, the data. And let's console log response.data. So this is the only thing we want, right? If we do this, it should work. You can see it resulted into like data from the API. This is correct, right? There's a like there's information, there's people, there's like results, there's, you can see this is the data that we were seeing in this API. The, the, the data doesn't matter. The idea that matters is it only resulted once and whenever we load the page. So whenever we render the page for the first time. However, if I remove this and be careful, if you're using an API which has a limit, which most APIs have, then this will be called once as well, right? However, it's called once because we're not making any changes to a state and this doesn't become apparent until we set uh, this, like we, we set the response equal to a state, which is what everyone does in an application where you're working with an API. For example, this uh, API call res returns a user, right? So let's, for example, pretend like we're, we, we wanna create a user uh, state, so set user and it's an object. So use state, uh, no, actually it's an array. So I'm gonna say, this right here. And instead of saying console log response to the data, I'll just say set user equal to response dot data. So now picture this, and I'm gonna add the, the array at the end here, picture this. If I told you guys that basically the use effect is called every time the, every time the, the API is, is done. So basically, and I'm gonna console log here as well. <laughs> so console log, a response dot data. So if I told you guys that the use effect is called every time the a state in the application changes, then we have to put this. Why? Because we're we're changing a state here in our application inside of our use effect, meaning that if we don't add this, it will be in an infinite loop. Why? Because it will call the use effect. It's going to get the data from the API. Then we're going to change a state to have that data. And now that a, a state has changed, it's gonna call the use effect again. And if we're using an API with a limit call, you'll see what happens. This is what it's going to happen. You can see it's calling the API a thousand times. I'm gonna stop this because I, I don't, I don't wanna waste this, but basically you can see it's gonna call this infinitely. And I'm telling you by experience because my first time working with an API in React, I, it was like a, how can I say? It was like a stock value, like stock prices API. And there was a, there, there was a limit and I was really excited that like it was a huge limit. However, I didn't know about this. I didn't know that we had to, <laughs> that it would be calling infinitely. And I wasted the, all my free uh, API calls in like 
five minutes when I when I like when I thought that I was gonna like be able to develop this application for like weeks. So be careful with this, and that w I would recommend putting this over here. And if you have, for example, another state that you still want to create the use th that you want the use effect to be called every time every time another state changes, you can still put them over here. So here's just a place that you can put different states that you want to trigger the use effect. And another cool thing is that a lot of people don't realize is that you can create multiple use effects. So I can come here and say use effect and it's literally a, a compilation. Use effect is a compilation of the class components lifecycle methods and it's like everything in one because you can do a lot of stuff with it. So yeah guys, this is the basic idea of use effect. I recommend like every every application that is like at a complex state or even like beginner to complex states uses use effect. It is an extremely important hook. It is definitely the I would recommend learning it as the second hook after like states. And basically, if you're making an application with an API, you're definitely going to be using it a lot. Even if it, like it's a, an API that you created, uh, you want to load stuff when the application loads, right? And that's why it is extremely important. So I really hope that I was able to portray what I was trying to, to say, because I know it might have been like in a rush. I still have eight minutes for my exam, but that's okay. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below, comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting every single day and I would really appreciate if you could help me grow my channel because I'm putting a lot of effort into this. I, yeah, it's, it, I would really appreciate it. So hope you guys enjoyed it and I see you guys next time.